If you like to build PCs or are a system builder or just love anything PC related and you get hyped up when new processors are being announced, then you guys are going to enjoy this video. How's it going guys? It's Billy here and in today's video we're going to be talking about the new KB Lake processors from Intel. Now it seems like Intel has finally lifted their embargo on it because you can see a whole bevy of different reviews and specs and whatnot from all these different YouTubers and tech websites and whatnot. So I'm going to kind of compile it onto my own video over here. Not all of the information but at least some of the information that I found personally interesting and hopefully you guys will as well. So without going too in depth into this video, I'm going to give you like a little too long didn't read about it. So if you have like a Haswell, Broadwell, Skylake processor right now and you were thinking, oh hey, Kaby Lake's coming out or Kaby Lake, I don't know how to pronounce it yet. Maybe there's like a little definition thing on how to do it, but I'm going to just say uh, Kaby Lake for now. And you're thinking, oh look, Kaby Lake's out and I want to upgrade my processor. Should I do it? The short answer is no, don't bother. If you have an old Skylake or Broadwell or Haswell processor, just go ahead, slap a nice little aftermarket cooler on it, air, all in one water, whatever your choice is, and just overclock that bad boy. And you'll see a little performance gain without having to invest any or very much money into your system. Now, overall, this is a little disappointing because Intel has kind of done their own little TikTok method when it comes to changes in their processors. A tick and a talk, meaning that there are new generations and they would be improving over the old one, meaning that the process would change from uh, a different fabrication from 32 nanometers to 22 to 14. And now for Canon Lake, it's gonna be 10 nanometers. And in all honesty, that's probably the one that I would wait for if you like using Intel products. In case you're already not looking at AMD and their Ryzen ones that are going to be coming out shortly in 2017. Now overall, what does Kaby Lake even do? This is kind of, instead of sitting on that whole TikTok process, this is an optimization of Skylake as a whole. Now you can kind of see it also with the name Skylake to Kaby Lake, but anyway, it's still using their 14 nanometer fabrication. Essentially what it is, it's an optimization of what Skylake was. So you're gonna see some slightly higher base clocks out of the box. For example, the old 6700K had a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz, and now the 7700K, which is the successor to that, has a boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz. So yeah, yeah, those are where the small kind of performance gains you're going to see right off the bat and it's really really minuscule because you'll see in a bunch of different benchmarks in terms of like gaming and whatnot that there's barely even any discernible difference between the two like almost none so that's probably where you're going to see it the most is in those just slight base clock jumps and boost clocks as well but probably where it seems like it's going to be the biggest is in its overclock ability some people are claiming that they're able to hit five gigahertz on the 7700k which is pretty impressive overall i don't know if performance wise it's really going to amount to much but i think it's just cool to say that you have a five gigahertz processor. Now essentially where the other gains and improvements are going to be coming in is from the chipsets, the Z270 and the Q270 chipsets, where they're going to be some small peripheral improvements mostly. And you guys can read about it on your own if they kind of mean anything to you, because for the majority of people, they probably won't mean much. And especially in the gaming performance, because that's what we're mostly talking about over here is kind of gaming and other applications. You're probably not going to see much of an improvement when it comes to that. So overall, yeah, if you have a Broadwell, Haswell, Skylake CPU and you're interested in Kaby Lake, I probably wouldn't even bother. There's kind of no point in upgrading right now. And let's just see what AMD has to offer with the Ryzen afterwards so we can get a nice little fair comparison between the two. Honestly, I'm really excited to see the battle kind of commencing now. Hopefully AMD can be that comeback kid and, you know, sweep us off of our feet and get some well-priced CPUs that perform really well. I'm honestly really interested in to see that battle because Kaby Lake has been a little bit disappointing so far when it comes to that. Yeah, it's doing the optimization rather than that whole TikTok thing. So let's see where Canon Lake kind of takes us in this next year and just kind of see how it performs instead. As I mentioned earlier, guys, all of my sources and any kind of additional reading you can find in links in the description below. I'm going to be linking to other videos that I found interesting from other YouTubers and even just some articles that I read as well. So for all of you other system builders out there and you guys in general that just love this kind of PC information, what do you think about this Kaby Lake update? Do you think that it's worthwhile if you have a CPU from like, you know, the past three years or so? What do you think is kind of like that cutoff point in terms of CPU performance that you would want to upgrade to? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. So if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to press that thumbs up button so you let me know that you liked it. If you didn't, press that thumbs down button instead. And either way though, give me some feedback in the comment section below what you liked about the video, what you didn't like. I always want to be improving it for you guys the viewers either way though thank you guys very very much for watching today's video hope you guys learned something new and i'll catch you guys in the next one see you later